friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Question Discussion. We are talking about the chapter uh, by question discussion here and today we'll be stepping into the chapter 2 where we'll be talking about questions from the process, the methods and different other testing practices. And here we are continuing with our next question which is question number 14 and let's see what exactly they've got. So question number 14 says, which of the following test activities are typically done during the Agile project, but is not as common as traditional project? So first of all, again, we have to recall all the understanding related to Agile versus traditional models. And uh, we just have to be uh, kind of like very, very clear with what are the key differences between them. Indeed, what's the damn opposite thing related to uh, traditional versus agile. So here, I think we will have to go very straightforward. You don't really have to trick around things or you don't have to dig into a lot of information. You just have to be very, very clear with the understanding of the differences between the agile methodology versus traditional model. But the options will be driving you here. So that's one thing what you have to take care of because only options will tell you which one is right okay because there could be a number of things which we can talk about when talking about the difference between agile and traditional models so let's look at the option a option a says trusters write detailed i think that's the very first word which tells you that hey that's not agile we talk about high level documentations very brief information but nothing as detailed as possible right because we don't have time in fact even if you write detailed information the team is going to consume the similar amount of time in order to answer them or read them right so agile certainly promotes a lightweight documentation throughout the life cycle that's where this option shouldn't be even read fully but professionally i would recommend that please read the full option okay so testers write detailed test plan so all team members can understand what will be tested during each iteration, which is a very, very tricky option. If you don't concentrate on the word, word detailed as one of the parameter of Agile, you are sure that option A could be one of the right answers. Okay, you don't have to do that. See, this is how I follow it, right? As you read, you, you know, put your pressure on each and every word. The word detailed itself kills it. I'm not talking about how does it help or what does it help with? It's all about whether do we write detailed reports, detailed documentations, answer is now, Agile doesn't support that. Okay, talking about option B, testers are heavily involved in creation of automated test cases, which are then used to verify the implementation of requirements. I think that's one thing which we discussed in this particular chapter too, that we try to achieve maximum automation right from initial executions to the regression test suites, right? 70 to 80 percent work, not only testing, but work of the entire agile process should be automated, right? In that context, this looks absolutely fine because in traditional models, we don't seek 70 to 80 percent of automation or maximum automation. Automation is sometimes even optional. But Again, not to be sure on B, <laughs> let's cross check C and D as well. Tester performs exploratory testing in order to find important defects quickly. See, that's another crazy option, right? Exploratory testing is one among those basic practices which we use in Agile and certainly uh, testers do get involved in that. But what's wrong here, right? It, it's it, it is common everywhere, right? It's not that somebody has written a classification that, hey, exploratory testing was invented by Agile and traditionally we never knew about it. It's been there for a long time. It's not something unique about Agile. See, you just, just understood that things are sometimes very, very different. It just doesn't just go like the way we read it, right? So while probably you are reading it, you may feel that, yeah, that's absolutely true. People use exploratory testing in Agile, but they also use exploratory testing in traditional models as well. It was not restricted. Okay. D, testers collaborate with developers to understand what needs to be tested. Amazing fact, right? It, it, it does not certainly sound like this is going to be wrong by any chance. <laughs> because team, team, whole team approach is all about Agile. And we don't say that we don't collaborate with developers uh, in traditional, we, we do say that, right? In traditional, we never interacted with them. We never collaborated with them. We were working very, very isolated. So uh, 
you know, it looks like the right option again. But let me tell you, test and developer collaboration is a good practice in all life cycles. It's not that it was written somewhere as one of the characteristics, characteristics of traditional models like waterfall and V model that a developer and tester should not talk to each other. Was that written somewhere? So if you're thinking about that, we are going wrong because a tester and developer, say for example, if you don't concentrate on the word collaboration, they still talk on the defects, right? A developer who does not understand what exactly is supposed to be done here, they will ask you to have a discussion and you do co collaborate in order to explain them what is the reproducibility steps, what exactly the defect is all about. So you're getting my point? This is where sometime all the four options looks correct and you come back and tell me that, uh, come on, you know, this option, I don't know what is right, everything looks right. But you need this level of understanding, trust me guys, and this is not what you get from solving mock papers, okay? You don't get this level of understanding from solving mock papers, you get it from understanding the syllabus, going through the content, being wise yourself, having the knowledge of what exactly is being asked. Now in this context, as you understood well, the right answer here is, B, testers are heavily involved in the creation of automated test cases, which are then used to verify the implementation of the requirement. All right, moving on to the next one, and this is question number 15. Consider the following activities, and based on that inputs, we have to answer a question which says, which of the following combination of these activities should occur in the Agile project? Okay, combination of activities should happen. Okay, again. Let's see, huh? it's not necessary that all three should happen because your options are also saying that sometimes they say only second or only third. So please don't be driven by the word combination, okay? Because you may think that then only B and C is the answer. <laughs> don't take that stupid thing into mind that, okay? When they say which of the following combination. So when they say following, that means in the given four options, which one is right? So you don't have to be influenced by the word combination here that only one and two and two and three can be the right answer. Okay, so please just take care of that. Now, what are the activities they're talking about? They're talking about strict enforcement of system test level entry and exit criteria. Sounds really good. Yes, we certainly need that. And uh, that's from the perspective of uh, tester, developer, and business representatives, which are important to define a feature to be done because system testing is a final functional level which acknowledges and accomplishes the required user story. So it's very important that uh, this activity should be strictly followed uh, in the Agile. Two, collaboration between developer, tester, and business stakeholders to define acceptance criteria. Yeah, that's another thing which is absolutely true. Okay, collaboration between all the team members because it's a whole team approach. So that goes hand to hand with respect to Agile because test level entry and exit criteria um, could be you know taken into account. Three, functional verification testing of user stories developed in the previous iteration. Now, functional verification testing of user stories developed in previous iteration. Hey, that's repetition, isn't it? That's repetition in the sense like, uh, is that something like feature should be verified uh, after the sprint gets over? Now you always do it in the same sprint when it was created or implemented, right? Completing the boundaries within the 10 days of time that whatever is implemented should be tested within it. So in that context, third activity is not what we are looking at. So. I think uh, this is what it is, but I'm a little puzzled with the option one. Strict enforcement of system test level entry and exit criteria. So, uh, test level entry and exit criteria. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, that's what, this is what I was feeling about. I had a, a, a very strong intuition that something is going wrong here. Strict enforcement of system test level entry and exit criteria. A level specific entry and exit criteria is a good practice in the traditional models, not in Agile. In Agile, we have definition of ready for a sprint and definition of done for a sprint. And when it comes to each item, that is user story, we have acceptance criteria to define the completion and accomplishment, right? So that's where option uh, statement one or activity one is incorrect that's coming from traditional so in this context the option uh, activity one and three 
are not something which should be done in agile projects okay because entry and exit criteria at a level test a test level is practice of traditional in agile we have dor definition of ready definition of done and for user stories we have acceptance criteria as far as we achieve acceptance criteria our job is done okay so in that context put together the right answer here is a only the statement two is correct okay and the answer is collaboration between tester developer and business stakeholders to define the acceptance criteria which would be the most important thing to define the completion okay Moving on to the next question for the day, uh, question number 16. Ah, I told you already in a previous question from chapter 1 that you sometime may have a question where you have to select two options. So just be extra cautious. This question will have five options and they would smartly mention it on the top that select two options. Okay, so which two of the following statements are true on agile projects? Now, we have to just read the option. There's nothing, no context, no subject line. Uh, all we have to do is read the statements and then pick the right ones. So number one, A, testers should closely work with developers while retaining an objective outlook. Absolutely right, okay? Being a tester, you don't have to lose your perception. This is one of the important recognition of being a good tester of Agile methodology that you have to maintain your isolation from the developer, but working together to understand and support. So yes, testers should work closely, but at the same time, they should maintain their unique perspective of end users. B, test manager do not exist in organization doing agile development. Come on, test manager is a manager position and they do exist in any organization. It's just that it's not something, uh, okay, uh, as a role, right? So it's other way around. Test managers exist. So currently this statement says do not exist. No, you just have a test team which is embedded with the development team in agile methodologies. But when you need help, you need to reach out to someone, right? So there will be a test manager who can be outside your team to guide you or assist you or be a coach for the test team to support them, okay? So B is absolutely not correct. Test manager is a standard position for an organization. C, there is no difference between what testers and developers do on agile project of course there's a big difference developers though we say that we are a development team but we comprise of three different members or four different types of people like business analysts architects developers and testers and they have their own responsibilities so of course there's a difference between what a tester and developers do a developer will be responsible to create the product and a tester will be responsible to validate them right so it's not that just because they're working together, their work is exactly the same. D, developers should try on test, rely on testers to create the automated regression test. Developer should rely. Now what that rely certainly goes in line with. The developers and testers work collaboratively, so they don't have to rely on each other, right? So I don't have to say that I'm relying on them. They have the capabilities, right, of doing what they have to do being a team member, and they all know each other's work. But it's just that we allocate them exact responsibilities, right? So I cannot make that word in this statement that I rely on them. That means if this person is not available, the team cannot do anything, which is a big dependency when it comes to agile team. Now, we never have a dependency. If two people go offline, two people are not available, then other eight people can still manage the team and their work. That's the point or characteristics of Agile. So D is also wrong. Let's look at E. A selection of users may perform beta testing on the product after the completion of series of iteration. Yes, of course, you know what is acceptance testing. And at the end of uh, series of iterations, when we talk about releases, we may certainly ask the business users to perform a round of beta testing to get the real user feedback, right? So put together in this context, the right answers here is a tester should work closely with developers while retaining the objective outlook and e a selection of users may perform beta testing on the product after the completion of series of iteration 
Okay, so that's all the three questions for today. And I hope I'll be uh, coming back to you with more questions in our next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.